Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. I had, uh, I've got a whole list of, of, of uh, videos that I want to make, but as so often happens, uh, something popped up that I, I felt like I wanted to put at the head of the list. Uh, and, and so I'm going to talk a little bit today um, about being alone uh, when it hits. Uh, I was showing those of you who, who watch us over on Patreon, uh, know Halle, my student, and, uh, and we had covered the Palm Hill Strike, uh, the last one, I think, and, and somebody, and I should remember who, excuse me for not, uh, was it IR Old Viking Airborne? Might have, might have been, might have been somebody else. So, so excuse me for not remembering, but they said, uh, you know, a hammer fist is uh, is an excellent technique as well, and and that's that's true. <clears throat> Situationally, it is, and so I, I told her, I said, well, the next one we're going to do over there, I have wasn't going to do it. I was going to get into kicks, but I think we'll cover hammer fist. I believe it comes back to the purpose of this one here in just a second. Um, so I was explaining to her about about hammer fists, <clears throat> and I showed her a a video of uh, one of the old UFC fights. It was between Keith Hackney and Emmanuel Yarbrough. Uh, and uh, I guess I won't get into a lot of detail on that, but if you've seen that, you remember I I, I knew Keith back then, and it was a fight to see, and it was an excellent uh, uh, lesson on on. The use of hammer fists, both good and bad, <clears throat> and 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 so I, I didn't think anything more about it. But then when I was uh, <clears throat> and I and I use a lot of those those reels I always have with my students. Use a lot of the UFC fights and things like that to kind of train them, kind of show them, uh, you know, missed opportunities here and there, and, and what could be done. But anyway, when I brought up uh, my YouTube uh, feed today, that that was still up in it brought a thought to me. Uh, have you ever been to a fight? Have you ever been to a boxing match, you know, live, or, or a wrestling match, or a jiu-jitsu match, or a, you know, a cage fight, uh, whatever? If you've ever been there, uh, you'll notice how many people are yelling, uh, you know, from the corner or from the sidelines, you know, grab him, get the ankle, get to this, get to that, he's dropping his right, you know, you, you got you got everybody in the world who wants to help their person uh, uh, see what they they don't think that they see, you know. And to to be honest, I mean, when you're in those things, you don't hear most. You don't hear what people are yelling. You have other things on your mind. Um, but you many times, you know, the the guy does want to be attuned to uh, what his coach is saying or his trainer is saying, um, because that is meant to be helpful. And even if they don't hear it uh, during the match itself, uh, at least, you know, at, between each round, they go back and they, they listen and their their coaches telling them, you know, here's what's going on, here's what you need to do, watch when he does that, blah, blah, blah. Or she, there's a lot of, now there's a lot of female fighters, and I had some female fighters myself that I trained. Um, <clears throat> so not leaving you ladies out, because a couple of the toughest I ever had were, were women. Um and I've, I've got one coming up now, but I'm not going to let her fight. Uh, but but going back to the corner, you you know you're taking some advice. Your your coach is there to, to help you along. Well, I I never did that, and I refused to do that. When any of my fighters went out uh, on the mat or in the ring, uh, I let them go, and I, I said not one word, not one word of encouragement, not one word of advice, nothing. And I know that a lot of people thought that was pretty strange, and a lot of people uh, probably thought that I was letting my fighters down. And uh, that's not at all the case. My fighters were extremely uh, uh, successful, shall I say. Uh, my my white belts were extremely successful against some other people's black belts, and that says something. Um and the reason that I did, and, and even in, in those occasions, occasionally, they're, depending on the rules and the way that, that, that it was set up, there in some cases there were rounds, you know, several three-minute or five-minute rounds. But even during those rounds, uh, 
I said nothing. Just just let them take a break, and get a drink, get their wind, and get ready to go back in it. You know, and I, I just I just stand there. Um, and occasionally, in cases to where some of the other guys on our team uh, were yelling things to them, I, I would I would shake my head. No, no. The reason for that, and I, I explained to my guys, uh, the reason for that is because when you go into a fight. You take what you know. Okay, you ever been in a fight? You ever been in a street fight? Uh, how many people came up and helped you? How many people, uh, you know, encouraged you? And and, and well, there, there's always somebody where they're going to hit him in the head, kick him. You know, there's always those idiots. But if anybody is coming to help, uh, we had an old saying: uh, if anybody's coming to help, it's usually coming to help the other guy. You know, and and my my friend uh, Jim Harrison uh, said years ago. He, he always said, you know, if you're fighting somebody in the middle of a forty acre field, nobody's around for miles. A groundhog's going to come up out of a hole and bite you on the butt. So it's it's just a matter of realizing it's raining on me. How come it rains on me so much when I mean to say that? It's all right. Um, <clears throat> it's a matter of getting used to the idea that you are in this alone. Okay. And you had better be able to handle it. That's the purpose of training. Now, uh, there were, and, and I've, I've, I've known also, guys, the ones who were successful <clears throat> and became successful, first off, they trained with the idea and the understanding that this training was for a purpose. The, tr the purpose of the training was not training. The purpose of the training was to learn and ingrain in, in to yourself what you needed to do in a specific situation, you know. And we also have a, a, a saying, or I have a saying, and that is, I'm going to be dripping wet by the time this gets done. Um, and that is, we don't train until we get it right. We train until we can't get it wrong. That's what re repetition does. You do it and do it and do it and do it and do it. And you do it with foremost in your mind that you are going to be have to be using this in a combative situation. Okay. And there, there, I had one guy who, who trained and trained, loved training, uh, went down. We drove quite a ways to a tournament, and he got there, and he started getting sick to his stomach. He just couldn't do it. He bailed out. I gave him every opportunity. I told him he was going to hate himself. He didn't, didn't go in there, and he still couldn't make himself get in there and fight because he had not, he had not gotten it in his head that a fight was actually at the end of this training. Well, I see this uh, in a lot uh, in preparedness, and that is those who have become wrapped up in the preparation of preparedness without making it real in their heads that this is a, for a purpose. It's probably going to be necessary. And, and so often, they also, uh, you know, if, if kind of fall into the trap of they're always going to be there, uh, those there to to talk with, to support, to encourage, to point out what you need to be doing, uh, and and that's that's the wrong way to approach it. You know, in an emergency, when things happen, when if if everything falls apart, if what's going on right now, and you're driving to an appointment in the city or whatever like that. And you get uh, uh, stopped by one of these these protests, you know, and and all of a sudden you're stopped, and somebody drags you out of your car. Uh, hey, there is you, you don't have time to flip on the YouTube and see uh, what would so and so say about this, you know? Say you, they're they're dragging you out of your side and they're dragging your wife out of her side. You had better be ready to go, and you had better be ready to go by yourself because help may be coming. But it not coming in time for you. Okay, uh, when it's time to go, it is time to go. And and if there's anything that I that I well, there's a number of things that I see that I think people should tighten up on, and I'll get to those eventually. Uh, but this is one of the main ones, and that is that your training is meant to point towards its use. Okay, if you don't think you're going to have to use your training, spend that time doing something else. Because it is not going to get you what you want. You're not ready up here. 
and you need to be ready up here all the time and you need to be ready up here uh, to go it alone so you are you know think about this uh, uh, j just like my fighters say you know occasionally they lost but they learned a lot from that loss and they learned more from from some guy being able to nail them in the head you know with with a good kick than if I just said hey somebody can nail you in the head with a good kick right so experience is the greatest teacher but until you and but in this your first uh, contact with experience can get you killed so that's all I wanted to say today that's why this kind of skipped ahead uh, of the other things on the list and that is you got to train you got to train with reality in mind and you have to train with the expectation that you are going to be in it alone because if you think help is coming well help often comes in the form of an ambulance right or the cops just taking reports and and trying to find out who did it or, or nowadays maybe not trying to find out who did it okay so anyway take that for for for, for the way that i mean it as helpful uh, change your mental gears if you need to so that you're understanding uh, I'm getting ready for this, whether it's whether it's combatives training, if you're over there on Patreon with me, or or somebody else, uh, or whether it's uh, firearms training, or whether it's just preparation. If you don't see reality as as the as the purpose of this, uh, you're not training or preparing the way you should. So I'll leave it at that, and remember that we prepare well today, and that means doing it the right way, getting our mind ready, getting our mind set, getting our, our focus on it properly in order to live well tomorrow so that we can come out the other side alive, right? Okay. So, man, this rain feels good, but I got to go get a haircut. So I will talk to you all later. You all have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.